Hey everybody, Cody with Prince's Craft RV. I just got done getting my motorcycle out of the Flyer Discover here. Let's go through it. All right, let's start right up front here on the 2023 Intec Flyer Discover. We're gonna go over the operations starting here. Uh, right up on the front, it's gonna ride on a two and five sixteenths ball. Once you get your tow vehicle backed underneath it, you're gonna slide your latch down onto the ball once you lower onto the ball. Make sure that these ears right back here have dropped into the cavity, and that should tell you that you're latched onto the ball. To release it, it's just gonna be the opposite. Pick up on the back and slide the latch backwards. Manual crank tongue jack with the top line up and down, pretty standard. Safety breakaway chains are gonna go, uh, cross underneath the hitch and clip onto the receiver hitch. Seven-way cord that's gonna plug into your tow vehicle is gonna run your brakes and lights on the trailer. And your safety breakaway for the brakes on the trailer, the electric brakes. Uh, if you do get into an incidence where you get uh, uncoupled from your trailer, this cable is gonna rip out of this little box mounted under here. And uh, as long as you have a good 12 volt battery on board the trailer, that's gonna apply the brakes to the trailer brakes and bring this thing to a stop. A little storage tote here just behind your tongue jack. Spare tires mounted up on the front wall. If you need to change it, you're just gonna remove the two lugs and pull that thing off of there. Moving on over to your LP. Uh, we've got propane on the front. Standard 20 pound propane cylinder. You can exchange this, refill it, whatever works for you. Pretty simple on and off if you just follow the instructions on the valve here. One way's open, one way's closed. When you get ready to refill this or exchange it, you're gonna wanna close your service valve, remove your service pigtail, and then you'll need a couple of wrenches there to take that loose. And then you're just gonna lift the cylinder out and go exchange it or refill it, bring it back, put it back in, retighten that, reattach your service hose, and turn your cylinder back on. Propane regulators mounted right behind it. Shouldn't need to do anything with that. It should all be adjusted and ready to go. Now you do have four corner stabilizers on this trailer. Um, these are gonna be what we call a spline drive or a split drive. Takes a different kind of tool than like your standard three quarter inch socket uh, that a lot of uh, stabilizer jacks take. Uh, the trailer does come with one. They do make an adapter that you can put into a drill, make the job a little quicker. Moving back up the side here, new for 2023 is a furnace. So now we have a Dometic furnace on board the Flyer Discover, which is gonna be a huge add and really help keep that uh, winter months available for you for camping and keep everything nice and warm inside. Exhaust comes out right here. It's gonna get hot, make sure you don't cover it, make sure we don't get any little fingers around it and burn them up, anything like that. Just below that, we're gonna find our uh, exterior solar port. This is gonna allow you to hook up a portable solar panel, just plugs in right here, and allows you to charge your onboard battery via the sun. 30 amp power cord. Unit does come with a power cord. All we've gotta do is take our L-pin there, match it up with our L-pin on the side of the trailer. Give it just a little turn, and then we wanna lock and snug this lock ring. We want a good tight connection here. If that gets a little loose, we can gener generate a lot of heat here and we can actually see cords start to melt, which is what we don't want. So make sure we get a good tight connection. Just below that, we're gonna find some identification stickers. The top one here that is, I always say is yellow and white is gonna be our tire identification sticker. It's got your tire sizes and your tire pressures on it. Now these is, this is what is recommended to be your tire pressure. On this unit, we are at 51 PSI. It also has some load information. The one below, right below it is your manufacturer sticker. It does have some repeat information and it has your VIN on it. Our water connections. Water door locks shut with just a little thumb latch here. Once you get it open, we're gonna have two ports inside. 
The one on the left is gonna be our uh, freshwater fill or our tank fill. This is where we're gonna carry water on board the trailer and we're gonna use the water pump to pump that water out of the tank into the onboard faucet, which is inside and I'll show you how to do that. The connection next to that's gonna be for our water hose connection or our city water connection. You're gonna to wanna to hook up to this with a uh, drinking safe water hose and a water pressure regulator. Now, this just bypasses the water pump, no need for that, no need for the tank. The city is gonna provide your water pressure and all of your water that you need. Now, the door is equipped with a knock away. You can just slide it out of the way. Whenever you hook your hose up, you can close this and latch it. Just makes it look nice and clean. And this little vent right here next to that is gonna be our battery vent, which is mounted interior. And I'll show you where that goes. Um, underneath the front side here is gonna be a drain tube. This little white tube right here. It's gonna be the freshwater tank drain. And I will show you how to drain that on the inside as well. Now on the 2023 Flyer Discover, the, uh, this one is equipped with two tip outs. The tip outs are, uh, two of them is an option. This side is standard, which is gonna be our driver's side. Um, as you can see, we do have some step rails gonna allow you some access up and around if you need to. And we're gonna cover our wheel and our tire on the other side. So moving on around here, we do have your rear vent. So since this is a toy hauler, we do have vents for fresh air to uh, ventilate that interior cabin while it's going down the road. Again, our stabilizers across the back. Now moving on to the back here, um, we do have your big light up top here, which is also a porch light. There's a switch on the inside to turn that on and off. Our tailgate's gonna come down. License plate mounts right here. To uh, open our, our loading ramp, so it is keyed locked so you can secure your stuff. Just to open this, you're just gonna tip your latches out at the top, push the lever up and out on both sides. And this door is not very heavy. It's easily manageable by one person. We're just gonna tip it down and set it on the ground. That's gonna give us our access to load our motorcycles or our side-by-sides, anything that you may wanna store in here, bicycles, it's great. Um, the big loading light, I've got a switch right here in the door for it. And it's actually uh, red in color. So you know when it's on and when it's off. And then the other switch here is our main lights, which is just gonna be our main cabin lights here. Moving on around the side here, this is gonna be our optional tip out on the Flyer Discover. I'm gonna go over how to actually open this up and set it up with you. It opens up just like the cargo door. We're gonna open our latches up and out with the levers here. And then we're just gonna tip this out. Now this is supported from the inside by cables that are run in the edge of the canvas. To get the rest of this set up, it is done from the inside. So let's go back up the ramp and let me show you how to do that. So we do have a cover in here. This is to kind of secure the mattress and keep everything in there. It can also create some privacy for you if you're camping with friends or anything like that. But to get in, we're just gonna unzip this. Now you can take this and roll it up and it's got latches. So if you roll this all the way up, it's gonna have one at the top and one at the bottom here so you can secure your cover up off the ground. Now to finish setting up the bed, we have what we call a bow or a candy cane or different names for them. We're just gonna clip this onto the rod there. We're just gonna push it out. And then our other connection is gonna be, this piece goes into the receiving tab just above. Just like that. And now you have windows that open in here. There's zipper enclosures. If you just uh, open them up, you get screening. When they're closed off completely, they're gonna be a gray material.
gives you a nice amount of ventilation through the bed. And both sides of these operate completely the same. So let's head back outside real quick and we'll finish up out there and then we'll come in and finish the inside. A couple more things to finish up on the outside and then we will finish covering everything on the inside. Right here, just to the left of our entry door, we do have some 110 outlets. And to the right of our entry door is gonna be our sink drain. So there is no gray tank or uh, storage tank for your spent water, or your gray water. So just back here behind this, you'll see that there is a drain valve which shuts your drain on and off. And the drain also comes with a quick connect fitting. So you're gonna attach your drain hose onto this. You can leave it on, it's gonna make it a real quick connection for you. Run your drain hose off to a uh, storage tote or to, or to a septic drain or something like that to get your water controlled correctly and draining in the appropriate place. But to connect this, you just push the collar back and you push it in and that's it. Entry door is held back with a magnetic catch. I really do like these. You just push the door to it. They hold pretty good and pretty sound. And uh, you don't have to worry about remembering to disconnect so you don't break anything. A couple of warning stickers coming in on the inside of the door there. I'm gonna talk about safety. Please read those and stick to them. Entry step, pick it up, push it in. That's stored for travel. Pick it up, pull it out, ready to go. Let's head inside. So starting right inside the door here, we're gonna have a few switches. Starting at the top is gonna be our control, remote control for our fan mounted on the roof. Just pull the remote out, push your power button. That's gonna turn your fan on. You can see here we have Speed setting is telling us that it is open and our air is coming in. It also has temperatures up there at the top. Now we can increase our fan speed. You can see the percentage going up there all the way to 100, or we can turn it down. Now at max, these move a ton of air. I believe they're 900 cubic feet per minute. So they move a lot of air. Uh, you can reverse the fan direction with this button down here on the right. Now it tells us our air is going to go out, which is really great if it's a nice cool outside, you open the windows and, and turn this on and have the air pull through it. Makes it really nice in here. Um, you can open and close the lid here. So the max air vents have the option to run in what they call ceiling fan mode, where you close the lid and it just operates as a fan without moving air in or out of the unit. Uh, and it also has auto mode. So if you push the auto button, it's gonna totally be based on temperature. And these do have to be generally pointed at the fan. So the furnace thermostat will be new for 23. Uh, this is gonna control our onboard furnace, propane furnace. The top is gonna be our main on off switch. Now these are a little tough um, that you gotta push them to the left to get the furnace to kick on. And then the bottom lever is gonna be our temperature setting. And you can kind of maybe see it moving in there. And then you have your room temperature up here at the top. Now to turn it, turn it off, you're just gonna push that over to the right. Below that's gonna be our awning switch. That's gonna run our Thule electric awning, patio awning out here. Now, one thing you wanna watch out for on these is that it's if you're gonna put it out, it's probably a good idea to put it out before you have your tip out out, as it will run into your tip out. Uh, once you get it all the way to the ground, it does have support legs that you can swing out and anchor to the ground to help support it so you can leave it out in a little breezy conditions. If it gets windy, windy, I always recommend putting them up. You can tip it for rainwater runoff, but anything lighter than a, a light rain, it's recommended to put it away. Uh, now we're moving on to our light switches. Again, we're going to have another main cabin light. Our cubby accent light is going to be the two cubbies over the sink. <clears throat> and then we've got our porch light, which is gonna be a nice bright light right here over our entry door. The other one is just a plug. There is no switch in that one. Below that, we've got our fire extinguisher safety device here. This is gonna be suitable for fighting any type of fire we may see in here. Check your gauge regularly, make sure it's in the green. 
Other than that, know how to use a fire extinguisher. Moving on to our kitchen sink. Uh, remember this only has cold water as this unit is not equipped with a water heater. So all we're gonna have is whatever's in it. To get it on, we're just gonna turn our lever out and back and forth isn't gonna make a lot of difference. So it's on or off. Moving over to our Dometic cooktop. This is gonna be a two burner cooktop. We're just gonna open it up. It does have our wind guards in here. This is kind of an open air trailer. You may need this. Uh, they just sit down on the sides like this. They do slide up and down a little bit on the sides that you can kind of help position them. Now to get this to light, you're just gonna turn this, the knob to the light position, and then it's got an igniter on board. You're just gonna push it until you get whichever burner you're trying to light lit, and then set your, your flame height with your knob, high, low, all that good stuff there. To put it away, you do have to, if you if you slid these down, the wing guards, they do need to slide back up. Otherwise they will not clear the hinge when you go to close. And then this just folds down. Now, a couple of things about this, you can't light your burners, close the lid over it and use it as like a warmer. And you can't, and you do want to let those cool before you close it, just to make sure the heat doesn't transfer to the lid. You forget about it and burn yourself. One last thing to mention on the cooktop and the furnace is if you've recently switched your propane cylinder out, it may take a minute to get either one of these burning again as we have to repurge the propane line. We get air in that line and we've got to get it all pushed back out. So it may take a couple of cycles on the furnace or several seconds to get everything kind of flowing again. Uh, so you may just have to keep at it for a minute. Um, moving down below our two burner cooktop is going to be our 12 volt refrigerator. Now, control knob is just up here in the top corner. The great thing about these refrigerators is they are compressor fridges, which means they cool off really fast. So there's not a whole lot of prep time. They can cool down usually within just a couple of hours and be at a good temperature. To get this ready for travel though, you do want to make sure you get your travel latch locked into the door of the refrigerator so it doesn't swing open and all your stuff fall out. Two switches over here are going to be next to our refrigerator is going to be our water pump. So again, if we're if we're going to be traveling with water in our fresh water tank and we need to get water to our faucet, our water pump is going to do that for us. We turn it on, it self primes. It is a pressure demand pump, which means when you use water, you will hear the pump come on and run and it may cause vibrations, which is generally normal. The switch next to that is going to be our kitchen accent lighting, which is our kitchen lighting. Next to that's gonna be our GFCI 110 outlet. Got a trip and a reset on it. If your green light is on there, you should be good to go. Uh, the, the trip and reset are good just for checking purposes if you're having some 110 operations. USB chargers next to that. And moving down below, is gonna kinda be where all the magic happens. Uh, battery box is gonna be over to the left. That's where we're gonna store our battery. Now, the cool thing about this unit is, is it's already prepped for a lithium drop-in. So if you wanted to upgrade from a regular lead-acid battery to a lithium battery and be able to dry camp for some extended period of time, it's a great option. And this guy's going to take care of charging it for you. It just uh, requires a flip of a switch um, and it will then charge lithium. Inside this, uh, this is our power distribution panel. We're going to find our 110 breakers on the left and our 12 volt fuses on the right. Now the little green flashing light has to do with the state of charge or the, the way it's actually charging. Um, it's, it's a built-in feature. It's nothing really to worry about, but there are some things that you can do with it that I would recommend reading the owner's manual on. Battery disconnect switch over here to the left of that. It is just that. When you put this thing into storage, turn that to the off position when you are using it, have it in the on position. Fresh water tank is back there in the back. And then we have got our fresh water drain and our tank drain, both of the two knobs down there at the bottom. Furnace output is gonna be here. Furnace fresh air intake is gonna be around the other side. So if you are running your furnace, Make sure we're not covering up this great work here. That could cause some operational issues with your furnace. Storage cabinet. 
Overhead, we're going to have our two radio speakers and our Jensen radio. Now, this radio does not play CDs, but it is Bluetooth compatible, and you can pair your smartphone with it and stream your music that way. Also has a HDMI port on it, so you could hook up a DVD player to it, kind of get a surround sound feature if you want to for watching movies or something like that. Moving directly across from the entry door up by the ceiling, we are going to find our CO smoke alarm. Now, this is a uh, battery powered smoke alarm. It has a battery tray with two double A's in it. You do need to check those, make sure this thing stays charged up and test it as you would any regular smoke detection device. The window right below that's going to be a slider. It just has a latch right here in the middle that you're going to pull out towards you and then you can slide the window. Now the screen can slide as well, which is great for cleaning. To close it, make sure you close it all the way. I like to pull these out and get it, make sure it's pushed all the way in instead of just slamming it shut. Just below our windows, we're going to have these couple of bars here. Now, these are kind of multi-purpose. They are actually for hanging your tie downs on, but you could throw a towel on here to keep it nice and dried out. Our last detector in here is gonna be our um, LP alarm. Now this is a CO propane gas alarm. So we've got kind of dual CO alarms there, but this one's gonna be down at the floor. Propane gas is heavier. It's gonna settle down around the floor. And again, this one's gonna have a test button on it that you need to test it and make sure it is operating regularly. While I'm down here, you can see that we have three rows of floor anchors. And that's gonna be where you're gonna tie your toys down at, whether it be a motorcycle, bicycle, just luggage. If you're using this thing to move, I mean, it's so versatile, you can do almost anything with it. Um, a last couple of things to go over here, we're getting close. It's gonna be our air conditioner. Controls are gonna be right here on the uh, ceiling assembly. We're gonna have our temperature control knob on this side and this one is going to be for our actual fan control or cool control so our fan control only if we want fan only is the gray side we actually want to run the compressor so we can actually get cold air we want to turn it to the blue side so if you want to get cold turn that to max cold and then rotate this to the big blue fan blade and that's going to actually turn your air on so we can get cool air now you've got a lot of options for air output here. You've got a vent on each side of this, as well as one that comes straight down. Now this also has a filter on it for cleaning. And to get that out, I like to open this front vent so I can get my finger right down in the middle here to help push that out. I'm gonna push that out and this is gonna be your filter right here. Just some warm, warm water. If you need a little bit of soap, that's fine. Get it rinsed really well. Make sure it's dried completely before you reinstall it. And it just kind of sits underneath these tabs. Just pop those in. And then we're going to take this and we're going to pop it back in by matching up all our ears here. I like to do my sides and then do my middle last. That really helps get it in a lot easier. A couple of overhead storage compartments on each side. And the last couple of things at the back end, um, we're gonna have a 110 outlet. We've got our fresh air vent. And then on the other side, we have another USB port. I think that pretty much wraps up our 2023 Intec Flyer Discoverer show out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Princess Craft.